Hello, welcome to the Frick Art and Historical Center. I'm Sarah Hall, Director of Curatorial Affairs, and today I'm in the museum's Jacobean room. I wanted to talk a little bit about how 17th century oak paneling from England has ended up in a 21st century art museum in Pittsburgh. Now, Helen inherited this paneling from her father, Henry Clay Frick, and there's quite an odyssey associated with this paneling. Henry Clay Frick bought the paneling from White Alum and Company, who were an English firm that helped provide decorative interiors and materials um, to wealthy people in Gilded Age America and um, in other places as well, of course. And White Alum and Company sold the paneling to Henry Clay Frick in June of 1919. And then Henry Clay Frick died in December 1919, with the paneling still in London and with White Element Company working to fit the paneling to specifications that would have it work in the Frick summer home, which was called Eagle Rock and was built on the North Shore of Massachusetts. So the paneling is stylish in the teens, it's stylish in the 17th century, and Henry Clay Frick buys it um, doesn't ever get to see it installed in his house because he dies. And um, then the estate fights over it for a while, actually for a number of years, um, trying to reach a settlement. It hadn't been paid for when Henry died, yet the decorators were carving the pilasters and making architectural renderings of how it was going to be used in Eagle Rock for his billiard room. Um, and so they fought for a while, and um, White Allen and Company even suggested they could sell it um, to another um, person who would use the paneling, but they would be selling it for 750 pounds when the agreed upon sale price was 1,200 pounds. So it would be being sold at a loss. And the estate finally said, no, we'll take it. And so then the paneling was in storage. It came over to the US and was in storage for a number of years until 1924, when Mrs. Frick and her daughter Helen decided they really did want to use it at Eagle Rock. They wanted to have it installed in the morning room there. And they then began um, renewing correspondence with various people. And they were, they were frustrated with White Element Company at this point. They said they didn't want them to have anything to do with the installation of the paneling. Um, and they asked Joseph Duveen, who was another um, art dealer who helped with a lot of the decorating at Eagle Rock and at the Frick Collection, they asked Joseph Duveen to help them find someone um, who might be able to install the paneling at Eagle Rock. And they finally did um, in 1924. And then when that section of Eagle Rock was torn down in um, the 1960s, Helen Clay Frick packaged it up once again, had it stored in Pittsburgh. And when she was making plans to open her art museum here um, in 1969, um, she had the, the, this room planned into the design of the museum and it was installed in 1970. And we do have some photographs of the workers working to install the panel. So right now, we use this uh, room as a way of displaying our English decorative arts and paintings, and it's a perfectly suitable environment for that. And about a year ago, uh, we decided to um, make this room feel a little bit more comfortable and a little bit perhaps more like it would have in its own time by installing some uh, English decorative arts and paintings. And so imagine yourself perhaps in an English country estate when you're here and you're seeing a family's collection of items appropriate to the room that have been gathered you know, over generations. And what we have in here are items purchased by Helen Clay Frick and Henry Clay Frick. This fabulous conversation piece by Arthur Davis is now on display in the Jacobean Room, as are a pair of portraits by Sir Joshua Reynolds, another conversation piece by Edward Haightley, a selection of English and Irish silver, and some wonderful hand-painted English porcelain. When the museum first opened, this room was used uh, as the space for trustee meetings, and over the years we've used it as a temporary exhibition space, um, we've used it as a library space, and, and right now we're using it to display some of the English and Irish items from our permanent collection. One of the really interesting things about my job here at the Frick is that the collection that we care for isn't just um, objects and display spaces and paintings on walls, but architecture as well. We have the home, Clayton, where the Fricks lived from 1882 to 1905, which we always call our largest collection object, and we also have this paneling. Um, so I would encourage you to come visit, and when you're visiting, remember that the things that are around you may be part of the collection and not just a wall that something is hanging on.